Hello, welcome to another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at the famous Birdland Jazz Club here in New York City. 2017 marks a very important year for drummer as well as band leader Lewis Hayes. Tonight here at Birdland, he's playing music from a very important record in his career, which is a tribute to the great Horace Silver, and which he performed with when he first moved here from Detroit to New York City and stayed with this ensemble for a couple of years. Now, his new album is entitled Serenade for Horace, in which he recorded on the historic Blue Note Records imprint. Tonight, I had a chance to sit down to talk to Mr. Hayes and reflect on the life of Horace Silver, and we talked about and dissected some of the songs which he interprets on this record, ranging from Song from My Father to The Great Senior Blues. And we also sit down and break bread about why Horace Silver is important to the idiom of jazz. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the sounds of drummer and band leader Mr. Lewis Hayes live here at Birdland, performing music from his brand new Blue Note Records release, Serenade for Horrors, live here on the Pace Report, reporting live here at Birdland here in New York City. <laughs>
Ms. Hayes, first of all, congratulations, one, turning 80, and two, congratulations on this brand new record, Serenade for Horace. Now, as everybody knows in the jazz world, you got your start with Horace Silver when you moved here in New York City. And I want you to reflect on, one, the songs on this recording, and two, why you decided after all these years to pay homage to a very dear friend and a mentor to you? Well, Horace, I'm okay. Well, Horace Silver, like you said, he uh, was the recommendation of Doug Watkins and Donald Byrd. He called me in 1956 to join his quintet, and I was very happy about that, Brian. And so I was with him from 56 to 59, and this was some fantastic period of time in my life. I was in New York, the place that I really wanted to be. And uh, Horace, we got along, uh, just was wonderful feeling with Horace and the guys in the band. So I uh, really had the opportunity to record with Horace and to record with a lot of other magnificent giants of this art form during that period of time also. So my career in New York started because of Doug Watkins and Donald Byrd and then they, they recommended uh, me to Horace Silver. And over the years, I was with him, like I said, those three years, and over the years after I left the group and went with Cannonball, we still, still stayed very close. We spoke, talked to each other, uh, so uh, I, I, did, I did five recording dates with Horace while I was with him for those three years. And then I did another one uh, after years had passed, passed. And then Horace, he lived in California for a long period of time. So when he moved back to New Rochelle, which is close to New York City, I didn't live too far, I don't live too far from New, Ro New Rochelle. And he wasn't feeling too well. And he would, his son Greg, and they were living together, and he would call me periodically and ask me to come and uh, talk to him. And, and uh, I would go and keep him set up and we would discuss. And he talked about a lot of wonderful things. I'm really glad I had the opportunity he gave me the opportunity to spend that time with him when he was uh, in, the, in the situation that he was in. So he said things to me that uh, made me want to uh, do this, what I'm doing now, what I've done on Blue Note, and I wanted to do it on Blue Note, Blue Note Records. And things just came together uh, at that time that made it really comfortable for me to do this. Uh, his wife, uh, Jamila and his son Greg, they wanted, wanted me to do this, and then uh, a person that was in my life years ago, Maxine Gordon, she came back into my life, and I said that I wanted to do this on Blue Note because that was the, the, that was the uh, recording company that I was, that Horace was with when I was first with him. So it all worked out, and the CD, is number one on the charts. It's been number one for about three weeks now. And it's five, is up for five Grammys. So all of this uh, is working out on a very high level. You know, all of this has come full circle. You, you, you're coming back to where it started. And, you know, I have to ask you about Horace. What were the things that you learned? Because you were 18 when you 19, 19 when you came to, to New York City. What were some of the things that you learned on the band stage as well as off the band stage from Horace? Well, it's, it wasn't about the stage, Stan being on stage, actually. It was about the music. And Horace was a prolific writer. And I just loved, and he gave me the, the opportunity to play, interpret his music the way I wanted to. And he would write arrangements that were very uh, wonderful arrangements. So that's what 
knock me out, I had opportunity to make history with Horace playing those magnificent arrangements that he wrote. You know, the songs, he, he, I, I'm looking at the songs that you cover on here. And there's also a brand new composition that you wrote in homage to Hastings Streets in, in Detroit. The, the songs, Senior Blues, and uh, you do his his landmark song with my father with the great Gregory Porter and Silver Serenade. There's some things that I really liked about Horace Silver. One, his music was just outright funky and it swung. But two, there was an intensity about some of his compositions that were very, very pivotal as far as the musicians that he hired to interpret his songs and compositions, which you're a part of. Well, Horace Silver, one of the things that he said to me was, Louis, you're a part of my history. So that was another thing, another uh, reason why uh, I wanted to do this recording date because of what he was saying, things that he said to me. And I realized that we both realized it, and it was just, we always had this wonderful feeling, and I, his compositions were complete compositions. And he wrote a lot of things, a lot of compositions that, uh, he had this reputation for being funky, but that was just something that people put on him. Horace wrote a lot of things that were complicated, and, uh, and, and he wanted a lot of different directions. He just had that great mind that he could uh, come up with all of those compositions. I mean, J.J. used to call him tunes. Horace had that ability to do that, to come up to write so many wonderful compositions. <laughs> Thank you. 
Let's talk about some of the arrangements and putting together some of the compositions. When you were recording and touring with him, were there some things that he wanted you to do as far as how you played it, or did he allow you to breathe and become a great musician? Yes, Horace gave me the opportunity to interpret his music the way that I felt like interpreting it. I listened to him play his arrangements, the piano, a lot of times I would, him and myself, I would be in his apartment and he would play compositions, his compositions, and I would just listen to him play the piano. And then I would uh, take it from there. And he never wrote anything out for me. He wrote the music for everyone else. But me, he said, Louis, you could come up with an a, a idea and interpret the music much better than anything that I could write. So that's the way it was always, just like that. What are some of your favorite songs and songs that you continue to play by Horace Silver to this very day, and why? I like mostly all of Horace's compositions. And I, I, the only time that I started really playing Horace's compositions again is on this recording date that I just, uh, we just completed and is out here. This is, this, this is the time that I started playing Horace Silver's composition is on this recording date. Before then, I was, I was um, busy and doing other things. I was with Canada and Oscar Peterson. I was doing uh, my own groups, but I was not um, playing Horace's compositions during that time. You're back on a very iconic record label, Blue Note Records, which was founded by Alfred Lyon and Francis Wolfe. Tell the viewers why Blue Note has and continues to be one of the labels that has been on the forefront of keeping guys like Horace Silver and guys like Ike Quebec and Train and the rich legacy of the music out there. Well, it was one of the original labels and they they're high quality and being able to put the music out in the world on a wonderful level. And they had the opportunity to record a lot of the great artists over the years. So things have changed now, but during that time, they were number one in recording a lot of the major artists of that time. Louis, what are some of your fondest Blue Note memories recording in, 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 the, in the late 50s? Every one that I did was, uh, was something that I, I cherish, all of them. <laughs> Every, all of them, <laughs> every one. Was a history-making uh, history adventure, so I enjoyed all of them. You know, you, you recorded with Donald Byrd. At the time, you know, going back to your Detroit roots and recording and even touring, did you think that Donald Byrd would become the iconic person that he would eventually become in the 60s and eventually into the 70s? Well, you don't, you don't even think like that when you're coming up. You just are enjoying yourself and you're growing and you're enjoying, enjoying the artists that you are, that you enjoy the artists that you're around and you all are making history together and you're not looking in the future, it's not even, you don't think like that. So uh, he was a friend and that's the way we lived our lives. Coltrane and everybody like that. It was not looking in the future and thinking about this is going to be, in some years, this is going to be serious history. You just are creating at that particular time. That'll do it again for another edition of the Pace Report, reporting live here at Birdland here in New York City. I'd like to personally congratulate and thank the incomparable Lewis Haynes for his time. Make sure you go out and support his brand new Blue Note Records release, Serenade for Horse, which is now available on iTunes as well as Amazon.com. I'd like to personally thank the staff and management here at Birdland for their warm hospitality. As always, please visit my website, www.thepacereport.com, for my weekly column as well as my past segments. Until next time, remember, if it's in the groove, it'll make you move. Till next time, peace.